Hello. <clears throat> well, today I'm gonna talk about a film that uh, is uh, basically it's a cult classic. Um, um, it is The Night of the Hunter, starring Robert Mitchum and Shelley Winters. Um, directed by Charles Lawton. This is the only film he ever made in his career. Um, and I will talk about kind of why that is. Um, uh, this film came out in 1955. And, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, uh, read basically the overall synopsis of it. So there will be some spoilers and I will, uh, uh, make sure to, uh, in editing, uh, write down where you can go to skip the, the overall gist, because, again, spoilers will happen. Um, and the reason is, I, I actually did this uh, video a few days ago. It's just, um, I was very tired, and at times I was kind of rambling on to all sorts of uh, things that weren't completely related. I mean, kind of were, but not totally. Like how this is black and white, and now some people don't like black and white films, and how oh, that's stupid. Which is, it is, and I think that's quite valid, but, you know, just the way that it, uh, that kind of tangent went on was just kind of like, yeah, okay. Um, also, this way, at least I will know how to properly uh, give, uh, you know, the overall gist of it for everybody who has seen it. Uh, I mean, obviously you'll know about the film already, but uh, any of you haven't seen it, I guess you can watch it anyway. But for those who do not want any spoilers, here is the uh, time to uh, go ahead to just sort of uh, skip over all that stuff. So that way I can just talk about certain stuff uh, like upon the, this film's release. So... Yeah, uh, I'll put this right here, and I'll begin right now. Um, so, the film, you know, it uh, the main character is a self-proclaimed uh, self preacher, Harry Powell, played by Robert Mitchum, who goes around to different towns, and he's also a serial killer of uh, women. He's not particularly fond of them. Um, um, and in the beginning of the film, we see a, a lifeless body of a woman found by some kids playing hide-and-seek. And, um, well, we don't see her whole body. We just see her legs, but still, no, dead, dead body, dead woman. And he, uh, we see uh, Harry pa uh, Powell uh, is a... Uh, Uh, driving and uh, goes to another town and uh, gets arrested for theft for you know stealing a car because I think it's assumed naturally that he took the woman's car and so because you no know, she's dead she won't meet it anymore well, not where she's going so you know uh, he uh, gets arrested and uh, uh, later in jail, he meets Ben Harper, who, as we also see, uh, around not long after he got uh, <clears throat> arrested, we see uh, Ben Harper head home with ten thousand dollars, and he uh, uh, also killed two men uh, getting away from the bank, and he uh, hides the, uh, the money in his home. Uh, where only his children know where it is, and uh, you know, their mother does not know, and uh, Ben is subsequently uh, arrested, and then uh, he and Ben, uh, or he and uh, Harry, you know, they're sharing the a cell together, and uh, as a uh, 
Ben is sleeping. Harry overhears him talking in his sleep about like the like the children know and whatnot. So it's like okay, he's a uh, basically saying stuff that you know he probably shouldn't at all while sleeping about the money and uh, so uh, Ben is going to be hung for the men he killed and he uh, is killed uh, before uh, Powell gets out of uh, jail and so when he does get out of jail he uh, heads to town and uh, uh, meets uh, Willa, Ben's wife or now widow and uh, after a while he also meets uh, her, her kids and uh, he, uh, <clears throat> they eventually, the two of them, uh, Willa and Harry, get married. Uh, and from the offset, John is distrusting of Harry, uh, but his sister Pearl, you know, uh, she doesn't seem to mind him at all. And, uh, and, and Ben is, or Ben, uh, Harry is very charismatic. You know, he's, a uh, able to really sway people with words you know he's like also like you know obviously a car a card artist uh, as well so you know he's got a way with words and uh um just able to get people pretty much on his side overall um so you know uh there's also uncle birdie who uh is a friend of John's. He's an older man. Whether you know, he could actually be his uncle. I don't totally know for sure. Um, it, it never really explicitly says or not. It's just that's his. That's just what he goes by, Uncle Birdie. Uh, of course, you know. Uh, I guess it doesn't totally matter if he's his uh, John's actual uncle or not. But regardless, he. Uh, you know, he and John, they, uh, they're fishing and they enjoy spending time with each other. Um, and so when he's, you know, uh, got, John has, uh, Harry as his stepfather, he, uh, you know, he's like, if you ever need anything, you just come to me and I'll do what I can to help you. And so, uh. With that, uh, you know, the film goes on and uh, Willa uh, loves uh, Harry and, you know, he's preaching and things for a while, at least for the, uh, the overall seems to be pretty fine, except for John, but, you know, that's... Uh, you know, that's... Uh, yeah, you know, he has a good reason to not <laughs> like Harry. Um, but, uh, um, but you know, he uh, Harry's trying to find out uh, where the money is, asking uh, John and Pearl, and uh, he uh, also. Uh, at one point, he threatens, you know, to, like, uh, harm a uh, pearl, like, uh, like, break her arm or whatever. And, uh, well, it happens to overhear this, and uh, she also uh, essentially uh, gets why Harry married her and about uh, basically how the money isn't <laughs> where, like, uh, Harry said it was that, you know, uh, Ben just uh, threw it in a river. Um, and so uh, uh, Harry kills uh, Willa. Of course, it's a 50, so you can't actually show that part. Cuts her throat and he loads her body into a car and then they uh, dumps it into the river uh, where uh, when Uncle Birdie is watching or uh, not watching uh, 
fishing, he sees a car uh, underwater and sees what's happened to her, and he's conflicted about whether or not he uh, should, you know, call the police because, you know, on one hand, you know, needs to be known she's dead. However, he's like, oh, well, blame me, because I found her, and so that's uh, not good uh, for him. So, uh, and he uh, is drinking heavily also. Uh, and so uh, Powell makes uh, the excuse how uh, she up and left him. And so uh, basically he'll never see them again. Right? He and the kids and the whole town will never see her again. And, uh, and so with uh, just him and the kids, he's doing what he can to find where the money is. And he threatens to kill John. And then Pearl tells him that they, uh, you know, because she found the money earlier. And then he, hey, they put it in her doll. But, uh. Just as uh, he, uh, you know, he's laughing at it like, oh, it's the last place, it, you know, anyone would look. And John's able to sort of incapacitate uh, Harry for a bit, and because you know, they're also down in the basement when all this happens, and he gets locked in the basement, and they run out, and he breaks the door and runs after them. They go down to where uh, Uncle Bertie lives, which is by the river also. But he's passed out drunk, and so he's no help at all. Uh, and so the two of them get onto a boat that's nearby, and uh, they go down to the river where with uh, Harry uh, uh, running, uh, you know, trying to chase them. And uh, as they're going down the river, you know, he's not really able to do anything, but uh, you know, eventually he's going to go and obviously look for them, you know, going around the river and all, but that's going to take a while. Uh, so the kids are going place to place during the, you know, uh, down the river, and uh, they eventually uh, uh, uh stop at a certain place where uh, a woman named uh, Rachel Cooper uh, finds the two of them and uh, she kind of basically takes in stray children and uh, so uh, the two of them live with her and uh, uh, the kids for a while, that she has there for a while and then eventually Harry finds where they live comes trying to, you know, charm uh, Mrs. Cooper, and uh, it seems to be working, but, you know, with uh, John's distrust of him, she goes in, and uh, when he's trying to get uh, John, who goes under, like, the porch, uh, she comes out with a shotgun and then points it at him, and basically he, she runs him off. But uh, he comes back later, and... Uh, he uh, comes to uh, comes into the house and he's uh, basically get the kids and everything and then he uh, uh, gets shot by Ms. Cooper, which uh, has a uh, like, like bird shot, so it's not exactly like fatal to you know him. And he goes out to the barn, and he's there overnight until the police come. And, uh, like, come in the morning, and he's finally arrested. But, you know, uh, John also has flashbacks to when to his dad was arrested in front of him. Obviously, which happened at the beginning of the film, and so at the end, he's, uh, you know, it's basically like marrying those two scenes, and he, uh, is... Yeah, he takes uh, Pearl's doll and starts beating uh, 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 
Harry with it, and then the money comes out of the uh, doll. But, you know, when the trial happens, uh, they have uh, John on the stand to testify against Harry, but he doesn't say anything. And, uh, you know, he's basically found guilty, and uh, it's essentially going to be put to death. Um, and as they're leaving the courthouse, uh, a mob comes to lynch Harry, but uh, police and everybody, they get a, a, him out of there, and the uh, prison hangman basically says to, that he'll see Harry soon. And the film ends with uh, Pearl and... Uh, <clears throat> yeah, per Pearl and John... With Miss Cooper at Christmas, and they're basically going to be fine. So that's the gist of the film. Um, so if you're here because you skipped um, the spoiler aspect of it, well, there you go. Um, so this film is very dark. It is uh, uh Obviously, for 1955, this was also quite dark. You know, it's based off of a film or but based off of a book. Um, and that book, the character of uh, Harry Powell, is uh, based on the killer Harry Powers, who was hung in 1932 for essentially, uh, you know, killing uh, women. And though it wasn't totally confirmed, he did did this. But there's enough like circumstantial stuff that you know. He can just lead to that conclusion. And uh, so, um, <clears throat> yeah, he, he was the inspiration for Harry Powell. And uh, yeah, when this film came out, um, it was not liked well. It was not liked well at all by critics. It was not liked well at all by the people who saw it. You know, it being uh, very dark and everything, just like the uh, tone and the story and everything. You know, for the, for 1955, this was a very dark film. So, yeah, people weren't totally uh, prepared for something like this. Um, uh, and as a result of the reaction from the public and critics... Charles Lawton never directed another film for the rest of his life, and I think that's unfortunate. I mean, he was he was an excellent actor, and for this film, he was this was a he was, it was a very well made film, so he was a good director, uh, uh, at least from what we see here. Um, and this Criterion release has a lot of stuff like the making of the film, documentaries, like interviews with people. That had something to do with the the film, or people who really uh, enjoy and appreciate the film. Um, they have a archival fifty minute archival documentary with Robert Mitchum. Archival interview with the cinematographer and sketches by uh, the author. Uh, and uh, yeah, the, the this is just a great, uh, not only a great film but a great set. And the second disc that's on here because you know, it has two discs. Um, as uh, Charles Walton directs the Night of the Hunter, which is a two and a half hour uh, treasure trove of outtakes and the behind the scenes footage. Um, Charles Walton he uh, basically made sure the camera kept rolling for multiple takes. You know, so whichever they take that would be used in the film, it's cut out and then put into the final product. But you get to hear him off uh, camera and directing actors and actresses. And at various points you hear music from the film. And it's to indicate which uh, this is the actual take used for the film. You know, when you watch it and... Uh, this was uh, sort of supervised by uh, uh, oh, 
Hubbard Giff, Git, who was a <clears throat> yeah, an archivist who had a hand in uh, ensuring this uh, film, uh, you know, not only was uh, restored as proper as possible, and, but he uh, is a huge fan of this film. And, yeah, this, uh, it has an introduction with, uh, getting Leonard Malton before, you know, you can see before, uh, the documentary. And he basically said that that was compiled, uh, from eight hours of footage from behind the scenes footage of, you know, multiple takes, but they, uh, basically condensed it so people... The public can see this and consume it pretty well. So it's two and a half hours. And they have it to where from, like, not the shooting uh, schedule, but but chronologically for the film. So from beginning to end, you uh, get to see uh, uh, just how this film was made. Uh, like, if you watch the film, you know what's going on. So you can then see which takes, even if there's absence of music, what what t uh, take was used for the film and it's really cool um aside from robert mitchum and Sh uh, shelly winters there's lillian gish uh, james gleason uh evelyn varden peter graves uh don uh, beto belia chaplin chapin gloria costello and costello and uh sally jane bruce um, this is an, just an excellent film. This is, uh, Robert Mitchum's, uh, best performance, in my opinion. Uh, should have gotten him an Academy Award. Not just a nomination, but he, uh, he was so good that he deserved the Academy Award. Also, there's, a which I mentioned here, but I didn't really, uh, say in the overall, uh, you know, earlier... But he has a uh, love and hate tattooed on his fingers, which he uses to illustrate the struggle of good and evil. Like, you know, love and there's hate. And uh, if you look uh, on the inside here, there's uh, Miss Cooper. Uh, discs. Robert Mitchum. Charles Lawton and uh, Robert Mitchum. And, uh, love and hate. So, yeah, that's, uh, uh in a nutshell, uh, The Night of the Hunter. Uh, deserved, uh, all the, uh, attention and acclaim it gets now, but, you know, Back then, in the 50s, especially at that time, I could definitely see why this wasn't uh, something beloved. Because, you know, at that time, people weren't completely uh, used to films like this. Um, um, though on the back of this, uh, here it, it's... Uh, it says, like, this is like a horror movie with qualities of a grim fairy tale, which is very true. Um, whether one would classify this as a horror film or not, uh, I guess that'd be up to an individual. I could see that how it has definitely horror aspects. Uh, you know, Harry Powell is a very sinister character, and Robert Mitchum's performance, you know, he's very charismatic, but he's also very... Uh, intense and creepy. Uh, um, 
when looking up some of the reviews, at least for Wikipedia, it doesn't really say much about the performances overall. So I guess, you know, you know on one hand, that could be a good or a bad thing, but it doesn't seem like uh, critics really pointed out anything wrong with the uh, uh, performances that I could see. It's just the film itself was, you know, it was like it was just like you were too dark or for some, like it was just too weird. <laughs> like it just was not a film... At that point in time, people were, you know, either ready to see or wanted to see. It was just like, uh, it might have been a, one of those films that's just too early, too ahead of its time to some extent, in the, at least in terms of the tone. In the 50s, people weren't totally uh, ready for something like this. Had this uh, been made in the 60s, might have been another story, but... Then again, you probably wouldn't have all the people in this film, so probably is good that it was made the time it came out rather than like a decade or so later. Um, but this is a great film, and uh, I was definitely a lot more coherent, thankfully, this time around. Last time, yeah, it was just kind of like, yeah. Going off on various tangents, very tired, and, and I think to some extent there was actually some kind of interesting stuff I did for the editing, because I did put it together, it's just at the end of the day, I'm like, I need to redo this whole thing. Um, I tried to put, I put some stuff at the bottom to make it kind of humorous, um, I don't know if it worked all that well, uh... I mean, just because it worked for me doesn't mean it would translate to anybody else. But yeah, this is a very good film. It's a cult film, you know. One of those that was a failure at the time it was released. But as time went on, gained a new uh, appreciation from the public and critics. You know, you know, either critics who were of the time this film initially came out, they rewatched it and they're like, Actually, it's not that bad. It's an uh, excellent film. As well as new critics who saw this film, you know, at various times beforehand. And people like Roger Ebert, uh, I believe Gene, Gene Sisko also, he praised it. So I know not much about, I know uh, like how <laughs> uh, Roger Ebert and Gene Sisko aren't always like the greatest in terms of uh, their takes for certain films, but... You know, they like this film, so uh, it's all right. Uh, so on, uh, on that uh, note, I could at least uh, agree with them on. It's a very good film. Great film, even. Um, I'm glad that this, uh, I, I have this uh, DVD, or Blu-ray. Yeah, it's Blu-ray set. I'm glad I have this Blu-ray because it's truly fantastic. Um, I think this is on the Criterion channel. I believe I've seen it up before. Um, I could be wrong. It might be streaming somewhere else. Um, but you can get this uh, Blu-ray uh, pretty affordable. It's not too expensive. Um, and if this ever comes to 4K, I think that this would be a one that I would upgrade because, you know, some of the films that are re-released from Criterion on 4K... You know, I'm like, I'm fine with the Blu-ray. Um, I know I did get the Dazed and Confused 4K, but that's also because, you know, uh, my mom saw that film and she really liked it, so I'm like, I'll give that to her. Um, but otherwise, some of those are, I'm fine with just the Blu-ray. Um, but yeah, uh, I recommend this film to people who have not seen it before. You know, even for you know, not just for just 1955, but even today, it's still a, f <clears throat> a fairly dark film because also, you know, you got children in peril, so they could be potentially killed off. So, if anything, that's pretty dark. So, I think that's just dark, any, you know, you know no matter what. Children in danger of being killed, <clears throat> that's always a risk. Um... You know, that's always a risk in terms of uh, certain people and their attitudes towards certain films because some people just will not like that, and understandably so. Um, 
it's quite dark in that aspect but uh yeah, Rich, Robert Mitchum, he was a fantastic actor. I mean, everybody in this film did a great job, and I know I didn't highlight every single uh, character, but there's quite a, a good amount of characters in there that you could just talk about for uh, quite some time, um, you know, as a collective whole or individually. You could talk a lot about Harry Powell, but, you know, might be best to just uh, <clears throat> end this now. So anyway, I hope all of you, uh, you know, thought this video was something. I hope all of you are doing well. Hope all of you are having a great day. Hope you're all having a uh, great weekend and have had a gr uh, great week. It's fall time by the time you see this. And of course, you know, I'm wearing uh, like a little... Uh, light uh, hooded jacket but yeah I hope uh, all of you are doing well and I'll see you all next time take care bye <clears throat> bye